Hey everyone, Pupsker here, and today in Warframe, we have Devstream 180. It goes over Jade Shadows, the next update, Warframe Augments, new reworks for Frost, status reworks. There's a ton to look over, so we are going to look over everything and all of the news posts that have come with it. We're not going to go over every single thing in excruciating detail, because I don't feel like making an hour-long video, because, dear God, this was a long dev stream, and it had a lot of good info. Oh no. Oh no. But either way, it was a good dev stream. I think 10 out of 10. Like, it was a really good one. So, start off, they're just like talking about stuff, shooting the shit. The usual like dev stream shenanigans, right? And there's pride loot in-game, normal stuff like that. There's gonna be a last featured dojo stuff, but they showed off the Stalker Jade Shadows teaser trailer. It's about 30 minutes, or 30 seconds, so yeah, I'll upload a little short after. Go check it out. The update is officially coming June 18th, which is a Tuesday, day after my birthday, everybody. Uh, so, you know, remember, sub, like, and use Epic Games Creator Code Pupsker to support ya boy's birthday in a month. Now, update 36. Jade Shadows coming June 18th. A lot of things. New quest, Jade Shadows. They said it to, it'll take like 25, 30 minutes. Not a really long quest, just a cinematic quest. We have the new war as a prerequisite for it. 57th Warframe, Jade. Evensong, Cantair, and Harmony. Jade, Arlet Helmet, and the Montague Signa. I think those are all just like the weapons and then some cosmetics. New game mode, Ascension. So straight up new game mode, fun. Clan Operation, Belly of the Beast, Yureli Deluxe Collection, Tenogen Shadows, New Augments, Arcanes, and Decrees, UI Improvements, and then Quality of Life Changes. 21st birthday? <laughs> I wish. I'm, a, I'm an old man. Sorry to say. Far gone, far gone. Graduated my college stuff and have my papers years ago. So, either way, first and foremost, Pablo just goes over Jade. She has two aura slots right here. I would recommend y'all check out this Pablo TLDR on Jade. I'm not gonna go over her weapons here because there's a better post that we can go over. But the TLDR is, look at that, she throws a sweet little damage bomb, right? It's about to give up and then boom, it's gone, right? Pretty good. Squad shield increase, you give good squad shield boost. Good shit, good shit. Squad ability strength increase. So you can give shield, you can give good ability strength, weapon damage increase. So you have good buffs off her and you have to toggle that around, right? Do your little AOE, hit your damage. And then, oh, it's about to hit. It like freezes them. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah, you can revive people out of range. Cool, not too shabby. Also, new Zephyr, yeah, you can fly around, do damage, throw your little abilities to kill the enemies. See, now you can see the uh, they're shooting the exalted attack. Pretty interesting ability, not mad. I would recommend y'all take a look at the Pablo video to get a full explanation, but we're also gonna look over the text explanation for Jade afterwards. So they talk a lot about uh, certain stuff like status reworks. The, these are the weapons, by the way, the Evensong the Cantair, and the Harmony. Good shit, good shit. Throwing 22.236, nice. Status rework as well, so now statuses are more noticeable. Uh, okay, it's a throwing star, who cares? The bow is pretty strong. Good status, good crit chance. I don't care about any of these weapons other than maybe the Harmony though. So yeah, judge the weapons. Do you love them? Do you hate them or not? So this is the Ascension game mode. It's essentially like a little moat collector, right? Kind of like a mobile defense. You defend that area and then you collect loot and then you go to a elevator and then you defend the elevator, collect energy while it goes up. They crashed it a bit though while they were trying to show it off, but that's how the game mode works. Afterwards, there will be a shop for or Ortis in the relays, I think they said like La Ronda, but either way, in the relay, there will be an Ortis shop where you can spend the Ascension game mode resource, okay? So, yeah, you can get cool loot. I think this is also for the clan event, Belly of the Beast, right? So you'll be able to spend your resources on the clan event for Belly of the Beast. You can get upgraded and uh, progressive ephemeras right here. You can get a lot of other loot. I think Belly of the Beast, right? 
tier one, two, and then three. Belly of the Beast will essentially, I think, just be the Ascension game mode. Kind of like how the last uh, event was just running the new Whispers in the Wall boss. I think this new one will just be running the Ascension game mode. And this is the highest tier of the Ephemera, right? So it looks pretty cool. I like it. Either way, that's what you'll be farming up through the Belly of the Beast uh, clan event. You'll be able to buy all this stuff. And in regards to arcanes, you can only buy two fully maxed out of each set of arcanes. So you'll only be able to buy out two arcane energizes and then two of each ever, each other arcane. So just keep that in mind. It's so you don't burn out and farm it for 70,000 hours. See, look at that. You can also get an enlightened hate skin. And this is where you get some of the better arcanes and everything. So yeah, it's gonna be a fun little clan shop. Oh, it looks like such a cool skin. Love this hate skin. The hate skin absolutely slaps. Like that's just cool as shit. And then this will be the regular shop where you can buy Jade and her weapons, right? This stays in game, but the uh, event clan one does not. And okay, this is where they show you how the Ascension elevator actually works. You, you, it's just a mobile defense and you see elevator power in like this top left section here. You just have to go collect elevator power. It drops off enemies, stuff like that. So it's all over the place, not hard to get. Coordinate with your allies, do it faster. It'll be a fun game mode overall, but you know, we'll see how much people love running the defense, mobile defense missions. So Frost is getting reworked. Frost will be a lot better, okay? I'm not gonna go over Frost in details until we actually see him. Blast is getting better. It essentially will be doing blast and AOE damage over time afterwards, so that's good. A lot of the elements are just getting upgraded, so we'll have to see how that goes. Not really all that mad about it. This is the new Yureli Deluxe Pandia skin in-game. I think it looks better in-game, right? Not bad, not bad. And they, they gave her a fat ass, look at that. Oh my God, there's gonna be so much Rule 34 of the new Yureli skin, as well as Ember Deluxe. Ooh, Ember Heirloom Deluxe. <gasps> Either way, this is a cool Marilina skin, the Pandia one. Gotta love Heirloom, or not Heirloom. Gotta love Pandia Yureli. Yeah, they were very horny this stream, looking at a lot of Warframe ass, so it's good to know. Warframe skins, Lavos and Equinox right there. There's another Tenogen, a little chest piece. I don't care a like a ton about it, but hey, same with the shoulder pieces. Man, yeah, there's a little like operator face piece. Yep, okay. There's the Equinox one. Technically, it's like three skins because Equinox has like three times the skin. And yeah, and that I think is the Lavos one. That one looks cool as hell. Like Witch Doctor Lavos. You get the little like crow Witch Doctor face. Very pretty skin. I actually love it. So very good. Very good. Here are some new augments, all seemingly really good. Temporal Artillery. You have the gun that follows you. Sevagoth, stronger, right? Dagoths pretty much dies, and then just, yeah. Weapons ability, everything applies doom. Corvex Wrecking Wall, you essentially keep your ability up forever, and it strips enemies way more, so. Yeah, this is some good shit, this is some good shit. This is them showing off the Protea turret. One turret stays with you while you're in your temporal, uh, like, timer, and it just shoots at enemies. And then when your timer is up, I think the turret goes away and it just stays there. So yeah, you just keep doing that. Either way, good turret, good turret. New decrees, this one being the most OP. Crates and plants draw plus one additional resource. That's just the best one, because it's a resource one. So that should make resource farming for a lot of your incarnate weapons 10 times less aidsy, or at least a little better. There's new arcanes as well. Feel free to go over each and every one. Overguard steal 8% or 8 times more damage to Overguard. A lot of these seem really good. Some way more niche than others, but all pretty good overall, right? So let me know what you think about those. They're nice, okay? They're nice. A lot of UI improvements coming. Duplicate mod configs will be way better. Wrong mod polarity indicator. New stat change indicators. View augments on ability screen. Featured fashion in the arsenal. Quick access continued, HUD scale changes, new distance scaling damage numbers, new player color customization tutorial, load customization from navigation. So they have a lot of just new stuff. Here's their beautiful, beautiful Warframe. You can just see the UI stuff, duplicate config. So you can duplicate over your config. They have better indicators, green and uh, blue, or sorry, green and red 
to see if like things are going down or things are going up. So they have little like toggle over that to get more information. So you can see efficiency. It says like, oh, channel abilities cost 64.5 of their initial value, ability duration after the cost, right? Like, okay, okay. And then it shows their shield, like this is uh, how shield works, reduce damage 50%. This is how your shield gate works. Shield recharge one second, the recharge rate. So it just scroll over, get more info. It looks better, same with like energy, right? It shows you properly how energy works. You have 130% efficiency, so it's more so like a 35.5% boost to your ability cost. Stop. Pretty good, in a good way, right? Positive boost, not negative boost. Hey, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub, Yo-Yo Senpai. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're just going over all the new Warframe loot update. Look at that Mesa Prime, so pretty. Green Mesa. Mesa Waltz. So you can scroll over, view augments for it, right? View augment for Peacemaker. And it shows you the augment and how to get it. Not bad, right? It's just a quality of life increase UI. Cool. Appearance for Excalibur. There's a community customization showing off some of the devs' um, skins and not skins, but color customization and everything. I mean, it's cute. Care about it if you want. It just links to their skin and you can apply the look. So now, now you have spooky looking Excal. It'll tell you if you, there's things you miss, etc. and so forth. So that's just a cute little UI element change. Either way, I think they showed off some cool skins. We have more UI element increases, making uh, quick access better in the open world areas. Uh, old 4K HUD scaling, I think. So it used to make your HUD tiny because it didn't auto scale with 4K. And now it, your HUD properly scales up with 4K. That's what they were trying to show off there. So nothing huge. They have the new enhanced stuff. So now uh, weapon shots look like this instead of that. So in, it spreads out in a circle so you can see the enemy, thankfully, instead of making the enemy a gargle fuck of numbers. All in all, like a good change, right? So yeah, that's more you. That's the UI changes. Sweet. Oh, they showed off this little tr trailer right there. Wake up, Tenno. It's time. The uh, new little intro. Here's your little intro to like uh, color them. The little tutorial. Pretty dope overall. So if you replay the game, yeah, more for new players, right? Not for us who play the game for a long time. On loadout. Navigation, you can now swap between your loadouts, uh, change characters and your mods right in the top left. So yeah, they essentially made it a little less so you have to run around less. You can change around all your stuff, right? Upgrade, swap, polarities, different weapon. Yeah, cool, cool, not mad at that. Quality of life changes, even more. Adversary pruning, you have a cap now. Undercroft Pathos Clamp rewards. You can get Pathos Clamps doing the portals. Enemy AI increase for next-gen consoles. Semi-auto to fully auto, auto being a toggle. Unified finisher and mercy mechanics. They'll just make it easier and more obvious how to do it. Last equipped relics. Uh, market blueprint and resource description updates. Rare gem mining improvements. Awakening checkpoints. And Necromech acquisition. All good stuff. All pretty simple stuff. There's no point in talking about most of it. It's pretty self-explanatory. They're just making things better, to be honest. Like, less annoying, better, cost better. Necromech acquisition becoming easier. Now, the thing that really matters. We have Heirloom Ember. Heirloom Ember, some fat cheeks. Heirloom collections are now Tenogen, essentially. This is a community-created skin. Uh, Viclio Naturin. Nice. So this was a community created skin and they bought the rights to it and now it is in-game Ember Heirloom. Ember Heirloom along with Prime Resurgence for Ember is coming Tenocon. So when Tenocon hits, day of Tenocon, the main Tenocon, uh, this will launch. So yeah, you can buy it in-game for 575 platinum, I think, or you can buy it for like $24.99. And this is all the stuff you get, right? 20th, July 20th, 11 a.m. ET. Heirloom concepted by Cleo Natrin. Nice. Ember Prime Resurgence returns. Ember Heirloom Collection will include the skin, Signa, Glyph, uh, Sigil, Color Palette, and a shiny Prex card. So you can buy it with Platinum, thank God, because it was way too overpriced the way they set it up before. Either way, it's still a little expensive, but like who cares? Because it's like acceptably expensive. I think $24.99 for the set, or just buy it with Platinum. So thank God. Here are the program changes. 
Ember Heirloom Collection available for both Real Money Currency and Platinum, it's your choice. Collection items available for purchase separately via Platinum. And Collection for Platinum does not disappear forever, it will rotate with future Heirloom Collections. Sick. What time was it? Oh, it's like 2.05. Okay. So that's not bad. Ooh. We got a good look at the fat cheeks of Ember Prime Heirloom. Dear God, I cannot believe they have done this. Yeah, are you gonna lie down here? Oh, have you been a crazy dog? Yeah, you gotta stay down here. I gotta close the door fully. Yeah, you stay here, as you can see. Rubens, he's just crazy. So yeah, simp over heirloom ember. Yes, you're a good boy, mostly. It is really cool, like, look at that, nice. But yeah, I mean, the, deb, the devs were simping over the fat cheeks of ember heirloom. For 30 seconds, they just stared at her ass, okay? So if you ever wonder why there's an insane amount of Rule 34 porn on Warframes, it's because the devs are well aware of how horny everyone is, and they are also quite horny, so, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit rude to assume devs can't be horny for their own creations, you know? The, the artists, the animators, the riggers, and all of the uh, devs, you know, clearly quite horny for their Warframes. Sculpted very, very... Well, and you know, she has like a galaxy of embers in her. Either way, ember heirloom looks really cool. Little fire heels, shit like that. Noise. So that's like the big brunt of stuff. They talked about soul frame a little bit. Like I said, there's also a frost uh, rework, but we'll go over that when it actually releases or if it's on the page. Soul frame dev stream at, as you can see here, Tenocon. This is the Tenocon schedule. This is the day one. Um, like pre Tenocon, the club, there's just, yeah. And then this is Tenocon, 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 dev stream, all the other stuff, right? Cause there's like two days of Tenocon, but only one real day. It's weird. I don't really like conventions. I've gone once, so I'm happy. Soul frame dev stream at Warframe uh, during Tenocon. And yeah, they had a soul frame short. So yeah, they're ramping up soul frame. If you don't know what soul frame is, it is uh, Warframe's Digital Extremes' second game. It's like, it's a Souls-like. They're not really original with their naming. It's a Souls-like, it's another game that made by DE, so they called it Soul Frame. It's a, it's a hilariously basic name, and hey, it's the same reason behind Warframe, right? It's a war for frame, it's a frame for war. Oh, what? this is a Souls-like, and we made a Warframe, so we'll call it Soul Frame. <laughs> the Warframe Digital Extremes naming conventions have always been very simple and very basic, and they made sense, and it's funny. Either way, that's Soul Frame. More Tenocon stuff, Lightning, Haku, Plexi, right? Creators, cosplay, props, cosplay. Love it, hate it, judge it. So that was the Warframe dev stream for this. Now we'll continue on and take a look at everything. So we have Jade Shadows here. June 18th, play for free, spoiler warning. Yeah, there's gonna be spoilers because like this is the future of Warframe stuff, right? It's stalker lore, so you have to have completed the new war and everything. Look at that, so cool. Ah, spooky. So you have new stalker focus quest. They said about 25, 30 minute cinematic quest focused on stalker, okay? We have Jade right here. You can look at all of her abilities. Jade's profound understanding, okay? Two aura mods. Well of light that heals allies, hurts enemies. Those who enter the well will be surrounded by judgment, right? Ooh, a cycle through these songs, increase ability strength, increase weapon or increase shield regeneration for you and your team. Kill enemies, it lasts longer. Glaive Prime during Tenocon, yep. You have Omphanous Eye, Jade summons the eyes, slow nearby enemies, dissolves their armor. When gaze falls upon enemies, they can be revived from a distance. Nice. And then Glory on High, this is when she flies up, soar with destructive power, use alternative fire to detonate judgments, causing explosion of Jade Light. Enemies affected by Light's judgment strengthen the explosion. So essentially fly around nuking everyone. You become much like Zephyr, a B-52 bomber, okay? You will kill the enemies and you will enjoy it, damn it. How's that image look? Yeah, that'll probably be the thumbnail. I like it. Along with maybe Stalker. Awesome, new gameplay. So we have the clan operation, Belly of the Beast. This will just be running the new game mode, Ascension, which is just, you know, a pretty simple new game mode where you'll be able to just run through it and then get loot from the clan operation. So, yup, good stuff, good stuff. This is the whole Jade collection. Warframe, Harmony, Evansong, Cantair, Cigna, and Helmet. So if you want any of that loot, you'll, you might have to buy it a bit. I'm down to buy some Warframe cosmetics. It's usually what I spend my money on. 
customization and QOL. Cool landing craft terror skin, as well as we already looked at the Yoreli Pandia Deluxe armor. I must say, Yoreli Deluxe looks a lot better in game versus the concept art. A lot of people are shitting on the concept art, but I must say, I think this looks a lot better than it did before. So, good job, Warframe. Good job. Enemy scaling and status rework. The TLDR for this is enemies will only scale their armor up to 90% DR, they will only scale so high, and a lot of new statuses will do new stuff and be a lot stronger. So we can check out the dev workshop stuff on that after. Oh, it's make me log in, I think, to go to like the forum, see if it actually works. Either way, it'll be, I think this makes the game actually easier overall and less annoying to build for. But maybe I'm wrong on that, you know? Maybe I'm wrong. Either way, we will check out the Jade Shadows status workshop, enemy rework, all that jazz. We'll take a look at it after because it is out there. And oh, it was the April 26th one. So they haven't really changed it up that much, but we'll quickly take a look. So yeah, that's uh, Jade Shadows merch collection. Uh, I'm good, but either way, nice. They'll make things a little less annoying. Sweet. If you want some lore, they also have on the Warframe News setup, the Reaper Lament. So you get some Stalker and Hunhao lore. If you wanna read over all of this, go for it. It is like a little spoilery, but uh, of course it is how it is. So you get a bunch of dope ass pictures with Jade. I'm gonna use some of these maybe for my thumbnail too. Ah, oh, they're all so pretty. Anyways, and then you get more stuff here, more stuff here. Yeah, so then you can see a whole dialogue tree between Hun Hao and Stalker, everything like that. Pretty good overall, pretty good overall. Not mad in the slightest. Oh, look at all these beautiful skins. Look at all of these beautiful screenshots and pictures. Oh yeah, that one was the same. Nice. Coming soon, Ember Heirloom. Fiery customization. It's a sick looking skin. Like I would watch all the Rule 34 <laughs> on this Ember skin. <laughs> all of it guys, just Coomer Gooner. Gooner Coomer Cave? I don't know, those are the words. Either way, I think they said with about $24.99 American, you can get the Ember Heirloom Seer Collection, which includes all the Ember Heirloom stuff and 425 Platinum. Or I think for about 575 they said Platinum, you can buy the skin in-game, the pack with Platinum. So that includes everything, but not the Platinum. So buy it with Platinum or buy it with money. Either way, it's a lot better. This is way less disgusting pricing than last time. Because like now at least you have an option to buy it with platinum or you have an option to buy it with money and it doesn't include an insanely high amount of both platinum and regal Aya. So it's less bloated as well as more options. Way better. For some reason, a couple people have been yelling and actually fighting saying that they should have just made it for money. Uh, no, you suck. More options is always good. I'd much rather be more consumer friendly. Fight me. Awful, awful take. So yeah, to anyone who gets mad that it's available to Platinum, uh, for Platinum now, I should say, uh, yeah, you, you, you probably just kind of suck. You know? It is what it is. You, you probably just suck. And, uh, yeah. Cool. Cool. Either way, there's the Warframe Heirloom Collection. They have the whole TLDR. Will Heirloom Collection still be paid only? No. And they'll, I think be available year round, okay. Any differences between the two paths? Not really. Only interested in one or two specific heirloom items. You can purchase them individually for platinum only. If you don't want it all, you can finally purchase individual platinum loot. So, awesome, awesome. Out of everywhere, uh, I think this is a good change. Only good changes here. 10 out of 10, good Warframe stuff. Will Heirloom release still feature designs for two Warframes at a time? No, and they are now community picked, so they bought this from the community member, right? Awesome. Are Heirloom collections still time locked? Do I need to buy with a time window? Nope, they fucked up completely the Mag and Frost Heirloom collection, so that shit's just gonna be vaulted forever, it seems. So, yeah, but now going forward, you'll be able to buy these always. At least Warframe realized that like, oh shit. I think the heirloom collection stuff, they got such an insanely high amount of hate from both community members and Warframe partners and everyone 
that they just decided it wasn't worth it. And I'm assuming not a ton of people bought the incredibly expensive skins because holy shit, did they like, they got so roasted. It felt like actual war in any Warframe comment section. Either way, they have the Devstream 180 Tenocon reveals if you're curious, Ember Heirloom, cosplay partners, the schedule and show floor for Tenocon, and Soul Frame dev streams. So if you're curious about that, take a screenshot of any of that. And lastly, the Lightning cosplay contest stuff is back at Tenocon. So check out all the cosplay stuff if you're curious. And other than that, we do still have the Dev Workshop here, if you're curious. If you want to go over everything, all of the Dev Workshop enemies resistance status changes, go for it. We've gone over this before. Uh, it's so hard to remember half of it, though. Right? Health, enemy, star chart, resistance variance, armor is much better now, thank god. New shield adjustments, dear god, there's so much, right? All of the skills. There's the new updated Frost, if you're curious about that. Feel free to screenshot. I think it's just TLDR, he's a lot better and stronger now. He freezes enemies a little easier and does just more. So, good Frost rework. There's also other Warframes that'll work a little differently with uh, resources and resistances changing. And yeah, cool stuff. Let me know what you think if you're curious about any of that. It's too much to go over. You could probably, I could probably spend like an hour or two going over in slow detail every single one of these, but hey, let me know what you think, everybody. There's a lot of changes, and that, for one, I say, is a good thing. Thank you all for watching, subbing, liking, and using Epic Games Creator Code Pupsker. I'm going to continue doing 24-7 streams over at twitch.tv slash pupsker, because why not? I'll just always stream, always have my computer running, and then just go take breaks whenever there's stuff I need to do. think it makes sense, but hey. Fuck it. Thank you all for watching, subbing, liking, using Epic Games Creator Code Pupsker, and I will see you next time with more Warframe or non-Warframe stuff. Yeah, cheers.